I'm going to talk about things that you might not like and I want to say that's okay. You can take some things or you can reject all of it. Free, free country, kind of. Uh, so I'm going to talk about some code crimes that I have committed to get some good components API out of it. And first let me ask by asking, uh, when you think of like good user interfaces, what comes to mind? What makes a good user interface? So for me it's the user interface should be intuitive, it should be consistent. If you, learn to, if you learn how to use a pattern on one page, it should also work across another page. And it should be accessible for all sorts of users. And when we talk about code, we don't really talk about the same things. But I think with component APIs, the same rules kind of apply. Uh, a component API should be intuitive to read an author. It should be accessible to all sorts of users. And it should be consistent. So if you, use, if you learn how to use a pattern in one place, you should be able to guess without looking at the docs too much. And to make that happen, sometimes you have to commit some crimes. So here are, here are a few that I've done. So to start, let me just show you this component. Let me make it big. Uh, so we call this component anchored overlay. It's very creative because it's an overlay which gets anchored to a something. It's called an anchored overlay. And it's a control component, so you have to pass you have to do the queue state and pass open and closed and then handle on close and on open. And you have to pass a prop called render anchor. And this is like uh, render props API were popular a few years ago where you pass a function as a child and it passes the props that you need to give through. So there's some inversion of control here. But the idea is there are a few props inside anchor props, things like uh, aria labels, things like IDs to match the overlay. And most of these are things that you might not want to worry about because it's already handled. So you just pass it down to the anchor. Now, this component's cool. It's nice. And you can put whatever content you want inside of it. And one place that you might see this component is uh, if you have used GitHub, you might be familiar with this pull request page where this is kind of like an anchored overlay. You have an overlay which is anchored on this button. Uh, we're going to look at assignees. Here are some of my great teammates. And so if you want to create this component with anchored overlay, this is what it would look like. First, of course, we have to manage the state of it. So uh, going to do a new state, going to add open close, kind of all boring stuff. And then when it comes to render anchor, I'm just importing the button for also from the same component library. And you kind of get this default button. I'm passing down all the audio labels to it. I'm adding a trailing icon. So this is kind of like a design pattern thing where we want how do you differentiate a button that takes you somewhere from a button that opens a menu in place? So there should be a trailing icon. The default is this triangle down icon. Um, but you could also use something else, like a gear in this case. Like GitHub uses gears here. And there's, of course, multiple variants. That doesn't matter. So when I look at this API, it's, it's fine. But um, I wanted to create a more specific component just for this use case. Because I feel like there's, there's too much craft here that is, is extra work. So for starters, um, I think this should be called action menu. And don't, don't worry too much about the name because like it's a menu of actions and you can select one. So we call it an action menu. And then all of this, which is the state management, I think action menu should do it by default. And if you want to control it, you can, but you shouldn't have to do it all the time. Like by default, the component should be smart enough. So that goes away. And then this render anchor always annoys me a little, where if we already know that some props have to be passed down all the time, and the design pattern is that user training icon, um, we should just do it on our own. So this trailing icon should also go away. 
and this is kind of what I like where there's action menu and there's a button that comes with action menu so you do action menu dot button and that takes care of the trailing icon the accessibility all of that and then finally there's like a action menu overlay because uh, the overlay could also take some props something like is the overlay small big and a bunch of other props so uh, if I want to make this component what does the source look like so the action menu I'm just keeping the reference here the action menu is kind of a boring component as you can see it doesn't really do anything of its own it just renders the button and overlay so I'm just saying pass down the children there's menu button which is slightly interesting because it has the training icon baked in and then you see that it passes down props so if you wanted to change the training icon you could it would just override the default one and we map it to the action menu dot button because uh, because components are functions, functions are objects, so you can just attach a component to another component and say action menu dot button is actually this menu button and you get this nice pretty API. Then we come to the menu overlay which is this component and this is the component that actually needs to use the anchored overlay that we discussed before and kind of hide all of that state management that somebody has got to do it, so anchor overlay is hidden over here. And there's something interesting here where there's open and closed state which is boring but then there's the render anchor and you might have noticed that how does the overlay actually get the render anchor now because um, it's not passed to it it's passed in the same component I guess uh, there isn't really a clean simple way of passing props between siblings in react it's all top down so the parent can pass things down the children can call back and tell the parent stuff but there's no sibling communication and that's like by design of course so the the documented react way of doing this would be pull state up so in the action menu which wraps both of these I'm saying there's an anchor there's a set anchor I'm going to put this in state I'm going to create a context that wraps all the children I'm going to put both of these in and then inside the button I'm pulling menu context and saying if the anchor is not set here is the anchor which is the button and I pass down all of the props the accessibility props kind of ugly but everything works and then in the menu overlay you say use context and you get the anchor that was set by the button so we're doing the same thing where uh, we pulled the component into state up and then the child informs the parent the parent informs the other child kind of like you and your sibling are fighting and then you need an arbitrator like your parents have come to like distribute the candy or whatever so that's what you do here and it mostly works other than okay let me show you so on client side you probably wouldn't even notice everything happens at once it's all good but if I have server side rendering there's a there's a tiny lag here if you notice and this kind of causes some jank the reason for this tiny lag is when we're rendering this on the server we don't really have the anchor because it's set to null so the first render that happens anchor isn't set yet and by the time menu button actually gets to set the anchor and a re-render happens you've already shipped that html to the client so none of that happens until the javascript bundle arrives on the client react hydrates and then gets to call all of the set states and that is when the hydration actually takes care of setting the anchor so uh, I've paused hydration here if I click hydrate I get that so on the server you get nothing because render anchor doesn't exist when I hydrate I get the thing and that is also kind of fine as long as you don't have bad internet because like with slow 3G this is what you'd get like the button just doesn't come it comes after a really long while imagine like all of these buttons behave the same way uh, that would be tragic so how can we set the anchor on the server because that seems to be the problem that we have to wait on the client because we're using this double render strategy where the parent has to first render the child and then the child can call the parent and then the parent can tell the other child like it requires two renders basically how do we do that on the server I'm gonna give like a five second dramatic pause for like the mind story the answer is crimes so the way we do this is uh, inside the action menu we say let's start with an anchor which is null and then there's this top level API in react called react.children 
and it lets you map through the children. This is usually to pass extra properties or check them. Uh, but something interesting here is that if you log child.type, it gives you the function that was used to create the component. So in this case, if it's action menu dot button, action menu dot button was actually created with menu button, so the type would return the function menu button, like just a reference to the button. So which means you can do things like this, which is if child dot type is menu button, now I have some access to the anchor. So I just say anchor is child. Like just take the child that was going to render, set it in my local variable, and then if it's menu overlay, then I clone the menu overlay and pass it the render anchor. Right? So this it's kind of like okay. The other thing that you also have to remember is that from the first child you have to render null, otherwise you'll get two buttons, one from the actual button, one from the render anchor. So this kind of feels like child kidnapping, like you kidnap a child or maybe child trafficking. Um, this is getting demonetized on YouTube now. So you kidnap the child and you pass it to the other person, the menu overlay here. And the best part about this is all of this is static. This, all of this has happened even before we've rendered anything from action menu. So we can statically go into children and their props, manipulate the API, and then render something once. And obviously this would work on the server, on the client. So we kind of bring that, we solve this problem pretty quickly. And then th there are of course trade-offs here, which the first one is this has to happen in order. If, if you s flip the order of like the overlay renders first and the button renders next, you wouldn't get it. And we have like warnings, etc. Like if you pass something else, it would just warn you that action menu only understands button and overlay. Those are the two components that are supported. If you give something else, don't do it, refer to the docs, etc. So is this a hack? If you think this is a hack, raise your hand. Wow, bunch of criminals out here. There were like 10 hands maybe. Uh, absolutely, yes, it's a hack. But is it a crime? Is it like a code crime? Like, is this a bad thing to do? Two people, three people. I think, I, I don't think I need to like give my talk. This is good. We're all on the same page. Also, yes, it's a crime, but sometimes crimes are okay. And the idea here is that hacks that make the code easier to read an author, that help developers do a good job faster within reasonable constraints of the system. So the constraints that we added here is that inside the action menu, you can only use the button and overlay from the same component library, and only then it will work. If you bring your own button, this wouldn't work. So it works for us because we're trying to build GitHub specific API from the component library. Uh, but I imagine something like Chakra UI cannot get away with this because you want to compose in different ways. You want to mix and match. So reasonable constraints of the system are, are the good point here. OK? Safe? Deep breath? OK, let's do more crimes now. So here's another component called navlist. It's a navigation list. And you give navlist.item to render something. And this is, you can see this in GitHub settings, where there's a long list of settings, and then you can have an icon, there's an href, all of these are links. So, and what did I do? Okay. Can I click this? No, I can't click this. Okay. That's not supposed to happen. Can I click? This. Okay, I can click this. Thank God. Okay, so uh, the way we decide what page should be highlighted in the menu is using this ARIA variable called ARIA current. So if you're making a navigation with a bunch of links, the current link should have an ARIA current on it. In this case, it should be ARIA current is page. And you might do this with something like window.location, check that out, and that would set page. If it's server rendered, you might have a different way to do it with the router. And there's a bunch of settings. That's kind of boring. The interesting thing here is that when there are too many, we try to group them. And inside a group, if something is selected, that would show here. So when this is rendered from the server like this, you want this group to be open. Because if this is what is rendered by the server, other than this slight bold effect, 
you wouldn't really see which page you're on. So it should be open by default. And that's kind of like a tiny uh, attention to detail type of thing. And the way that works is also that you pass ARIA current on the item, and the group is smart enough to know that there's an item inside it, so it should open up. Now, how does this component work? There's nav list, which is kind of boring. It's a nav with a list, so it's a UL, and it renders all the children. There's nav item, which is also boring. Because it's in a UL, it has to be an LI, and then it renders a link component. The interesting one is nav group, because it's inside the UL, so it has to be an LI. And then it has a button. This is the button that you click. It has a leading icon that you can pass. And then there's another UL with all of the items. It's like a nested list. Now, we need to have a way of knowing if this list should be open or not. So I have like an open variable, which gives a class name of open or closed. And then I need to set the value somehow. So when I'm clicking, I can say just like toggle, like the managing state, it's set by false. And then I can say, when it's click, open, close, la, la, la. That's where the icon is set as well. But when I reload, I need a default value for this. The default value should be open in case one of the items is, has ARIA current on it. So uh, one way to do this would be just ask the developer. Like, if you're using this API, just give me default open on the parent. And but when you think about how would the developer using this do it, they'd probably also have to maintain a list. Like if any of these items inside match the location path name or match the router path name, then it should be open. And a good component shouldn't ask you to do annoying work. This is something that should just happen on its own. So uh, I don't like that API, but it might work in some cases. So I want to do it by default. Like it should just happen. And so how do we set this value automatically? And one way would be crime, of course. And we just did the same crime earlier, where we had react.children. We looped through them. If one of the child has ARIA current, it should be open. Otherwise, it should be cold. Easy peasy, we all go home. But remember I said hacks are na -na 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 within reasonable constraints of the system? The first thing when we started testing this out with other developers, the first thing we did was uh, GitHub Docs uses Next.js. So they used a nav link and a router from that which means the nesting is completely different because it's going to be a router link, like a custom component. And even the ARIA current is actually on the next link, not the nav list item. And this would be different for React router, for uh, any other router. Like, all have their own different API. So we can't really rely. We can't really make assumptions on how uh, links would be structured. And I've realized that there are two things that we have no control over. There's state management and there's navigation. And the less opinions we have, the better. So the reasonable constraint of the system is not reasonable at all. That the structure be the same. So back to the drawing board. We can't assume children, which means we also can't do the context thing with callback, because it, it might not be a nav list item at all. It might be a next link. So we do different crimes. It's 2020. Women can do crimes as well. It's 2022. Wow, time size. OK. Uh, so we create a container ref and attach this ref on the group highest element of the group. And then when it renders with a layout effect, we're saying if container ref dot query selector, good old JavaScript, has ARIA current. And this is fun because this would test nested across many levels. It doesn't matter how it's structured because it only matters how it's rendered. And this can be looked at somewhat some of somewhat of an anti-pattern, because we're mixing declarative and imperative code together. Uh, but it works great. So there's that. And OK. So is this an anti-pattern? Absolutely. You already know. But is this a code crime? One hand. Nice. Two hands. Three hands. It's the title of the talk. Of course, all of them are code crimes, right? So but hear me out. The goal of a good component should be to abstract annoying work away, especially work that is not core to the user's goals or expertise. So in this case, the person, the developer who's trying to make the settings page, the last thing they should think about is, how do I find out which group is open so that I can show the blue highlight? If I'm using a navigation list component, I would like if all of that is taken care of, right? And the other interesting thing is like the goals are, of course, all of this is distraction, but also, the person working on it might be really good with like GraphQL and state management on showing this, but might, might not be very good at accessibility, so might miss the ARIA current or 
the right ARIA attributes. So the more we abstract away extra additional especially like annoying work away from folks the better. And this is kind of what we talk about user interface right, it should be intuitive simple don't make the user think this books called don't make me think I don't know your books ok. Fair? Deep breath? Ok one last time. So the I like this this is what we ship to production by the way the previous one and this is already on production this is how it works. But there is one thing I don't like about it which is if you have SSR then the use layout effect let's skip my slide yeah the use layout effect wouldn't again happen until the client hydration has already happened. So if I have SSR I get this nice maybe bug maybe feature where it opens up and it's kind of cool I would keep it and that's happening because of the same reason that we discussed earlier that from the server on server you don't know what's open so this is how it uh, loads and then when it when the JavaScript bundles arrive react hydrates itself that's when the layout effect is called and then it opens up. So it becomes the feature very quickly becomes a bug on something like 3G where it would be closed by default and you have already moved on reading something and then the sidebar opens something. So there is a lot of distraction and that is just like bad UI. So we need to figure out a default open right and we need to figure that thing out sooner. The, it does not necessarily have to be on the server but it has to be sooner than the JavaScript bundle arriving and the hydration like that takes a while on slow internet. So there is a there is an interesting crime here and the guy has a key because this could be a potential security well I do not know do not take advice on the internet this is just try it out for yourself. And the the interesting crime here that I want to show let me let me get some like credibility to for my hack. So this is Next.js docs and there is something very interesting that happens here. So of course this is like the giant ID next this is where the entire app lives and right next to this there is a script and it is called next it has the ID next data and if you look at what inside it is just like a giant JSON and the idea is that next JS has to figure out a way of rendering on the server and they state on the server which needs to be passed to the client and carried on from here. So that you do not have to do it next JS has to do it or if you are doing server rendering on your own you need a way of passing server state to the client so that it can continue from there. Uh, and this is one way to do it so there is data here there is uh, routes here there is a bunch of things. But JSON is still fine my favorite is this one this is just some inline script which sets Google analytics and this is this one which applies redirects which is really cool because if you apply redirects yourself that is cool but if you want Next.js to do it Next.js does not have access to your Nginx router or whatever like it is already too late. So if you want client redirects they insert a script at the top it runs async and the moment something gets rendered if they realize this is not the right page then you get redirects. So that is that is justification of the crime that other people are also doing it it is not just me and ok so here is the crime. Would it be so bad if I put a script tag here right like I put I could put this in the head but then I have to remember which component has which thing here it is nicer co-location we have been through that before. So it is nice if it is co-located here. And the the script that I want to run is that I want to create an ID and there is a new API react.use ID which gives you the same ID on the server and the client so we can rely on it. I attach it to the li and now I have group element is document dot get element by ID and then I can see I can do a query selector and if this has an aria current. So it is kind of the same code that we were running earlier but it is running as an inline script and the whole idea is that when the rest of this renders it will also ship with this tiny script and the script will evaluate as soon as it, the browser parses it so it is a blocking script and it is way before the rest of the bundle has arrived because this is part of your HTML now it is inline. So now when we do a slow 3G that is not working because you cannot actually do this you have to do a dangerously come on you have to do a dangerously insert in our HTML because you cannot just put script tags in JSX but you can put whatever you want in JSX if you just say 
danger, I know what I'm doing. So that's where the check with your security team warning comes in. Uh, depending on use case, this might be completely fine. This might bankrupt your company. You have been warned. This is not on me. Uh, so now when I reload on slow 3G, now that my script is working, you'd see that it always loads instantly. And now the feature bug problem is solved, because now I'm claiming this is always a feature. And I can remove the transition, and then it's actually a feature. But I, I kind of started liking this now. So even on so slow 3G, this works. And let me show you what happens after hydration. So this is the server output. This is already open. And when I hydrate, I get this, our favorite warning, that the expected output from the server did not match the expected output from the browser, because we, we messed we messed uh, with React. And the fun thing about this is that I've always thought of it as the server output and the client output have to match, but that's not actually true. The output pre-hydration and post-hydration have to match. This warning comes from hydration. So it's not so much about what was on the server. Like React doesn't care about what server or what like stack it ran on. React cares about what was the initial output. And then when it tried to reconcile everything, or hydrate everything, did it get the same matching thing? So if we're doing our own inline script, we just need to assist React in getting the same thing, uh, which sounds exactly as bad, which is exactly as bad as it sounds. So the way to assist React in this case would be, I say, type of document is, and if it is not undefined, so this should only run on the client. Remember, we already have our server script over here. And then it's the same exact script. So I just say get document by ID, and I know that the ID is already rendered, because that's what the server thing did. It attached the ID. So by the time this hydrates and runs, the ID would already be there. And then I'm doing the same exact thing. The interesting part is, because I'm saying default open here, this happens on the first render on the client. And it matches exactly the output that was on the server. Not the server, pre-hydration, sorry. So before hydration and after hydration, it's the same exact thing. So now when I reload, I get the nice effect. And I hydrate, and it perfectly works because the pre-hydration and post-hydration output matched. React is happy. And this was only for the default state. Now React will take care of this. So all of this also keeps working. Now let me ask you again. Is this a hack? Is this an hack? Is this a hack? Have I been? Is this an hack? Is this an hack away? But is this, is this a code crime? OK, a few hands, more hands. You all have way too much faith in speakers. Like, there should be way more hands at this point. Uh, I'd say you decide, because we don't ship this, by the way. This is not on production yet. This is a proposal. Um, I'm waiting for our security team to either fire me or say, this can work. So we will. But it might be different for you. So, because um, it does work. And I don't know any security vulnerabilities. There's ways to make CSRF happy, make sure there's no injections that can happen, but you decide for yourself. But also, yes, it's a crime. So, once again, the goal of a good component is to abstract annoying work away from the user, especially work that is not core to their goals. Like, none of this should be core to their goals. Imagine, like, if I'm not doing it, then the person who's working on the component has to do it. And there are no other ways to do it. They're probably do, going to do something similar, or worse, not do anything at all. And then you just end up, end up with like a slightly bad user experience forever, because there's no, there's no React way of doing it, which is, I mean, anti-patterns are, there's a name for that because it's useful. So final thought, a hack that makes code easier to read an author, helping developers do a good job quicker, within reasonable constraints of the system, are OK. So sometimes, crimes are OK. Thank you. Um, this is where <laughs> this is where all of the code is, except the last one. I will, I will not admit that I've written that. But the rest of it is on production. You can look at it at GitHub slash Primer. And I'll see you on Twitter. Thanks. Thank you, Sid. I think now I understand why did you didn't want me to tell a lot to everyone. I hope the only takeaway from this is not that sometimes crimes are OK. <laughs>
But yeah, I think eventually it did make sense. Uh, 